Uh, okay, well, you know, I'm Carl, and I'm uh, now a professor, which is, explains the tweed jacket, which I think it's a requisite thing for a professor to wear, and I'm, this is the, the voice of God speaking up here. I feel cool. All right, so I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about visualization, visualizing stuff, because I talked about it in, at TEDx Lansing, and what I did there was I tried to get everybody to drink the sort of visualization Kool-Aid, you know, like, yeah, you know, words can't do it alone, everybody visualize. Well, so what I'm assuming is like, okay, so... So, so now what, right? Okay, we want to do this now. So I figured this would be like a part two. Let's, let's, let's talk about how to do this. So um, don't worry, this isn't going to be a big slideshow full of type. But the two things you want to ask yourself is what's your focus and who your audience is. And the reason I ask that is because, uh, you know, I used to work for Newsweek magazine, and I had to always figure out what the point of the story was. For example, if I were working on this iPad story, I'd wonder, you know, is it a, you know, is it a, is it a business story? Is it a lifestyle story, or is it a technology story? It's all those stories wrapped in one. And so, and maybe you're going to even cover a lot of that stuff. But what is your main area of focus? Who's your audience? Is it for a technology magazine? Why? So, those are the kinds of things you, you need to ask yourself. What we're going to do is go from the broad down to the very specific very quickly here. So, for example, I did this for a new school uh, that we were building when I worked for a paper, and. It was like, you know, I wrote down all of these ideas on, on, the, on my, my commuter train. Basically, what just ideas for visualizing information on a new school. I didn't know anything about new schools, but I, I had a lot of questions. So I asked myself, well, you know, how, how, you know, how, how, you know how, where did the money come from to build it? You know, where did it come from? Where did it go? Where, where, where's the, where is the school located? Where, what's the area that kids have to go to that school? Um, all sorts of just tons of visual stuff. But there were actually four pages of this stuff. But you know, this is what happens. This stuff is not easy to do sometimes, although it's gotten easier, and I'm going to talk about that. But it, you know, this isn't easy. So the knee-jerk thing to do, and this is what happened, I didn't do a graphic, is this runs. And it's basically the mayor opening the school, which does nothing to anybody for anybody. It's useless information. It's like it does the mayor, his great his re-election campaign. It gives access to the reporter to the mayor's office, but it does nobody any good. No information was transferred in this waste of space in the newspaper. Although I love photography, but not that kind of photography. So another thing you can do for, with, your, with this broad brush of information and, and you, you start to break down, what you want to do is sort of take this big broad category that might be the iPad or whatever and break it down into its little component parts. And it's, hard, it's such a big sub subject. And we actually did this at Newsweek for, you know, the shuttle explosion. We did the, we, uh, we the um, post-it note thing. We were just writing everything we could think of. Every artist and designer and, and editor, we were all putting post-its on this big board. Everything we could think about, about, about the, 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 the shuttle, you know, how it was built, the history, what made it blow up, you know, stuff like that. And then we'd, we started organizing things into groups, like this deals with the, with the crew, this deals with the technology. And you just start moving these things. There were like four or five of us doing this. So that's another way to do that. Then, if you want it, you, there's technology now where you can actually transfer that data and that information onto these online sort of brainstorming tools like mind, ma mind map tools. If you like, search mind map on um, Google, you'll get, you'll get tons of these things. And, uh, or you can just go straight to this. And then once you've sort of broadened out and seen all of your, this happens to deal with ballroom dancing from one of my students, has nothing to do with the shuttle. But it's, it's like you can start to identify opportunities for visualizing information. Like, you know, gee, maybe I want to show this, show this, show this, show this, rather than just write about it. And then you've sort of got a plan now. So you've gone from this really broad thing to really breaking down information and organizing it, and then figuring out what's your focus. It's, oh, we're, our audience is, we're a business publication, but we want to talk about technology. But these are the ideas that I think we can, we can work on for visuals. This is my least favorite part collecting your data. And it might be in the form of a spreadsheet. It might be uh, calling a, a NASA engineer. It might be a floor plan of, of your school or, a, or, or like Columbine or something. It could be anything like that. You have to collect your information and your data because without this, there is no visualization at all. Just forget. You just, you know, cash it in because it's information and visualization. You cannot, you know, for example, this thing. I picked this up in India and it's like, Obviously, the reporter wanted to go home to dinner and just told the artist, the artist said, I need information on the car accident. And the reporter said, you know what? It's all in my story. I got a dinner date. And they left. 
So this is all right out of the story. 16-year-old Rajesh lost his right leg. So the guy just drew this Roger Rabbit car driving over some guy's leg. And it's like passing for information that really happened. And it was published. This was published. This is a professional organization. The bloody car crappy headline up there is totally about sensationalizing. If you give an artist, some artist, this, you know, a job, this is what they're going to do if they're not information people. They need to understand how working with information is the most important part and then having to say, no, I don't have enough to go on. And it's, it's hard to learn that lesson sometimes. You, you know, I, by the way, I've done crap like this in my life, and it's just like so embarrassing. I won't even, maybe I'll, maybe I'll put some online. Put your worst work online. It's so much fun. Okay, so, so now once you've figured out the data and your focus and all of that, there are all these really cool tools that you can use to, to do this stuff. There wasn't back then, although I think that's a spreadsheet. That's what I looked like in 1986. You know, Notice the hard drive. There's no hard drive. It's sitting on a ream of paper. <laughs> and they hadn't invented printers yet, so I don't even know what's in that thing. So anyway, but technology has grown up from here. It's, th it's like a lot better. And you know, I just put together this wiki. Um, it's free. You guys can all go there. I have probably about 100 different open source visualization tools that are on here for doing GIS, um, uh, you know, charting, just everything. And it's all open source. Some are PC only. Some of the best visualization tools right now are being designed for the PC, which kind of freaks me out a bit. I'm, I'm starting to look into like boot camp for splitting my hard drive on my Mac so I can open PC replications. So anyway, you can go there and you can even add your own things just to keep it going. But before you dive into one of these visual tools, you have to sort of remember Goldilocks. Because Goldilocks is, is for me, you know, you remember the porridge thing about Goldilocks? Goldilocks had this porridge issue. Like, oh my god. So like the porridge is too hot, it's too cold, it's just right. So what I mean is like, Papa Bear, there are graphics that are just too confusing. I know you're all thinking when you look at these graphics, when you look at a graphic visualization, it should make you feel smart. It should make you feel informed. Like, I get this stuff, you know, but, but something like this, you just look at this and you go, I'm the dumbest fuck on the planet. <laughs> because you don't get this. By the way, this is different vintages of wine. Now, a friend of mine named John Grimwade, who's the graphics director of Traveler Magazine in New York, uh, did a presentation where he took one of these, a spirograph, and he you know, made all sorts of spirographs, and, uh, and then just put labels upon, on top of them, the genome explained. <laughs> Inflation. <laughs> and it's like, so this is like, and you know what? Everyone will pretend they get it. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, my God. Because none of us wants to admit we're just dumb. You know, we should help people feel smart about stuff. So, so then there's too simple. And now this isn't funny. This is actually a serious thing about factory. You know, I don't have a lot of serious graphics here. It's more about the points. But, you know, you, you, know, you can write, the number of factories in our country is rising. We're making more factories. You can just say that. Do you need to make a chart to prove it? You know, unemployment is at an all-time high, 22%. So you show it going up to the all-time high. Waste of space. What you want to do is combine data sets to give it more meaning. Like, oh, OK, let's see how I can give this meaning. What data sets? We do that with GIS mapping and all sorts of things. They're analytical tools. So when you find data sets and combine them and visualize them, it exposes information. Thank you, Tom Crawford, in this audience for that. He's my buddy, and he talks about this stuff all the time, and I listened once. So, so anyway, you, uh, you want just right. You combine it maybe with production, and now you're saying, whoa, we're making a whole lot of factories, but production has stalled. What the heck is with that? And so it clues you into problems, and you can use them as analytical tools. You know, maybe the, maybe the market's bad, maybe the product's bad, maybe production refl reflects demand. You never know. That's certainly the case with oil. So, you want to get into meaning. That's not, so that's what Mama Bear is, is just that middle ground where you're actually being intelligent and you're not confusing the hell out of everybody. But another thing to do is don't just do the obvious stuff. You know, look for that unique angle. So this is not one of mine. This is Time Magazines. When you work for a big news organization or a small news organization, or basically every, this country is competitive, 
Our job was to be like the, you know, you know, be the voice of the people, expose the bad guys, you know, tell our readers, explain to our readers what's happening. But my real job was to kick Time Magazine's ass on every story. World Trade Center, we're going to kick their ass. Well, you know, that was, that was a, you know, there, this is John F. Kennedy Jr.'s plane crash. This is a case where they kicked mine. And so I, we did all the requisite stuff at Newsweek. We did, like, we showed, it's obvious, we showed the path of the plane, the spiral that everybody said it did, you know, the, uh, the search area for debris around, you know, in quadrants around Martha's Vineyard. We did all of that stuff. And it was perfectly fine. It didn't make anybody go, oh, my God. They did the same thing, but then they did this, which was they looked at the, the, the forensics behind the crash. They decided to help the readers understand. Every, the, the, what, they, what I was not listening to was, what is the question everybody has on their mind? What happened to that aircraft to make it crash? I'm showing how the path went, you know, all this. They went in, they showed, like, the forensics. They showed, like, you know, the, the instruments, dials, and what you're going to be able to tell from each one. If the propeller is bent backwards, that means it hit the water straight in, and the propeller was turning, so the engine wasn't dead. And it's, it, you know, all of this CSI stuff about the aircraft. I opened this magazine on Tuesday when I got to Newsweek and wanted to kill myself. Like, I'm so competitive. I'm not a sports guy, but, man, you give me a cartoon, man, I'm going to kick the other cartoonist's butt, you know. So really look for those unique angles. Now, once you've done all of that, you've got your data and all of that, now you're sort of wondering, well, okay, well, what kind of things can I combine? So these are things, these are visual devices that, you, that everybody uses. They, they work for a lot of things in life, but they're really great for graphics. So I use myself to, uh, to show, you know, do compare and contrast. And when I say that, you know, look for good versus bad, hit, miss, far, near, then, now, large, small, expensive, cheap. Try to, you know, you can just say big, boy, that's big. But unless you put it next to something smaller, average size, you're not going to get any idea of it. So look for opportunities to compare and contrast. There's cause and there's effect, right? So it's like, pow, you know? And the cause and effect thing is sort of like, there's, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Everybody learned that in school. So if the economy's in the tank, well, what caused that? So look for an action and a reaction, and you can visualize that stuff. You can tell stories. All of these visuals are telling stories. You know, behavior results in a certain consequence. Um, junk food, eating junk food causes you to be obese, you know, anecdotally, not even anecdotally. I just used myself for this because I didn't want to pay for any photos. So <laughs> look for opportunity. I was a cute kid, though. You guys, I was really a cute kid. I, my mom always said so. Anyway, so um, look for opportunities to show flows, you know, like hierarchy and, and processes and timelines and networks, things that flow and move and take you places. Those are always really nice things. Break stuff down, you know, like, so for example, you're talking about the, uh, the U.S. budget is so many trillions of dollars. Well, okay, w what do we spend it on? Well, defense, agriculture, education, and, so, well, break down defense. Army, Navy, Marines, break it down, break it down, break it down until, you know, you, people can understand that stuff. People need more detail to really sound and feel smart about themselves. This is all about making us feel smart about ourselves and learn. Look for ranks. Look for ranking. You know, people love rankings. Like, best to worst, richest to poorest. These are, when you're, when you're reading your documents or analyzing your data, whatever you're doing, whatever you work for, look for opportunities like these to do this. That's all I'm telling you. Locate something. GIS, there's so many mapping technologies now, it's just unbelievable. Label something so people understand what the heck they're looking at. These are not that funny, but I just thought it was more fun than not looking at something like... Um, this is Happy Carl and Angry Carl. So I can take all of you and split you into men versus women. And if there's a third category, just bring it on, OK? So um, then I can take the women, and I can break you down into decades by ages and uh, by race. And same with the men. And you start breaking things into groups. People can see that and understand that and see you know, what, what the majority is. Then there's this narrative thing. You know, tell stories. I had a lot of fun with my little finger. Uh, in front of the, the photo booth camera, you know, and just like tick, click, 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 and then I took it into Photoshop for those geeks out there and I animated it. So, um, so anyway, just look for, you know, storyboards and all of that kind of stuff uh, just to tell a narrative, you know, step by step, like how to change a tire or how to invest in the stock market, how to work with a, with a, 
with your IRA and let it grow and all those kinds of things. So all of this stuff applies to everything. Um, this is also my little bow to say thank you. And that's, I think I was under the 13 minutes. Yes! So. <laughs>